CEO of Glock Free Mobile Company, uh, together with my partner Manuel, that is here. And we are going to show you the new stuff we are developing on top of our framework. So <coughs> the new stuff is this point cloud streaming. But uh, before going specifically to the new stuff, the point cloud streaming, I will spend a few minutes to introduce Cloud3 Mobile, the framework, and the rest of the capabilities that are not points cloud stream. So this war we will talk about in this order too. So let's go. Cloud3 Mobile, it's a framework to build native uh, map application for mobiles. It's open source with a very library license, it's a PSD license. Here is the sources. We actually work on, on, on here, so it's not an old copy. We, we develop on this, on, this, uh, on this repository. And this is the, 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 the brief. It's an open source native for any device. Uh, to today, we support three platforms, iOS, Android, and HTML5 using GWT. GWT is a Google Web Toolkit that is a, a compiler that translates Java to JavaScript. So you can run Java code on browsers. OK. It's a, we have a native platform everywhere. The core is developing on C++. It's translated to Java for Android. So we have C++ performance on iOS, and Java performance on Android, and JavaScript performance on HTML5. But uh, we have the support for the three platform I mentioned before, iOS, Android, and HTML5. In Android, we have support for the glasses that are coming, not only Google Glass. Uh, so we are targeting our framework now to this new market of glasses. Uh, we have some examples there. Actually, there is an example of, the, of the, our framework running on a Google Glass. And we have, maybe, we will interest it in porting to Windows 8 or create a new a new desktop version if somebody needs it. Just now, we, we cover these three platforms. We have different types of visualization for the, for the planets. We have full ellipsoid model, or we can show just a piece of the world with terrain elevation, or we can show the world as a flat, as a flat plane. So different ways, based on the needs of your application, you can select different type of showing the, the globe. We support almost any kind of data. We have support for raster, terrain elevation, vectorial data. Uh, the vectorial data can be symbolized using 3D uh, objects, for instance. So don't care if your data is not 3D on origin, you still can use some fancy 3D visualization for you to the data. I like this example, for instance. This, I don't know which magnitude is it, but it's a point with the magnitude, and we create 3D bars to visualize this data. 3D models, uh, vectorial data on top of raster. This is a ISO surface on a storm. This is a plane, small plane, flying over a city. So we can visualize any type of 2D classical GIS data. And we have a lot of support for 3D information. You know, to create a good uh, mobile application, most of the time you have to to work on 
two sides, on the server side and on the, on the client side. So to reduce or to, to uh, or better, to improve the battery use and the battery uh, life of, of your device, you have to move everything that you can to the server side. So, and to do that stuff, you also need, sometimes you need offline use of the application. So for mobile application, it's a great, uh, great shade from full offline application to full online application with a lot of middle cases in between the, the cases. So for that stuff, we have a cache system that everything that is downloaded from internet can be cached on the device with different pol politics for expiration of the, the data. We have support for real time using WebSocket and stuff like that. So the idea from full offline application to full online application and everything in the middle is covered. Support for camera model animation, we will see that on the demo later. Utilities, uh, 2D renderer APA, HUD, uh, et cetera. Okay, let's stop talking. This one sample application, in this, in this example, I'm showing different raster data. Let's go to this code. We have support for WMS servers, CartoDB, Mapbox, Bing, you name it. A lot of possible raster sources. Not sure if this example works. Yeah, kind of. It's coming from a CartoDB application. It's a one raster layer, I think it's Bing, I don't remember. And this is a, a blue MS layer that finish here, and this is another w, WMS layer that get composed in this image. Um, <coughs> actually, it's full multi-touch. You have to see here. You, you can use your fingers to zoom, rotate, or pan. You can also tilt the camera. So you have full control using the multi-touch features of, of your mobile to move the map wherever you want. Another example, there is a terrain model with just a piece of the world. Vectorial data. Different type of lines, polygons, markers. So 3D, 3D symbology. <coughs> this is something like a population of the cities shown as a, a 3D bar. Is what I mentioned before. You can, you can use three D symbology for two D data. <coughs> we have a smooth animation for three D models. In this example, the airplane is moving, as well as the camera is moving around the airplane at the same time. So you can create these fancy effects. Another example of camera animations. <coughs> mm. 
That's close. Whoa. Sounds like you're there. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> and I, this example is uh, an ISO surface. It's a 3D representation of a, of a storm. <coughs> we have support for vector tiles. Come on, internet. Here we are. Yeah, it is. I hope it will work for the final demo. <laughs> Here, I'm just using random colors for, for the buildings. And you can see there the boundary of the, of the, of the tiles. You see, this is the same shape, but it's been drawn on different tiles. So here you see that are vector tile, not just vector. They are cut per tile and downloaded and processed per tile of the terrain. <coughs> we have support for hood uh, widget. This, this, of course, this is fake data. The north is not changing. Don't worry. So the compass is moving, labels, and altitude. They are the same. So this 2D widget always on top of the 3D stuff that is behind. So you can create this type of pilot views or things like that. <coughs> we have these fancy markers. We call it non-overlapping marks. They repel each other. So they, they don't overlap. Of if you are lucky, they don't overlap. So, as you can see, they look alive. I love when they come into the display. See the, the left side, the right side for you. <coughs> we are now working with this. Uh, sorry. This augmented reality view. Our hotel is there. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> this is more or less a set of examples. I have here more screenshots. Uh, some of them we already saw. This one, this one, just to, to show other applications that I have not here. OK, first milestone. I introduce you, Gloss 3 Mobile uh, features. And then we will go into the details of the new stuff, the point cloud uh, streaming that actually you were interested. Thank you for being on the previous part. That was not announced. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, the goal here is to be able to visualize huge, by huge I mean billions of points, huge point clouds on the device, on, on the mobile device. And of course HTML5 because we support the 3D platform, but our main objective is to visualize on mobile devices. So <clears throat> to do, to reach that goal, we create, we split the, the solution in three, in, three, in three parts. The first part is to be able to import and put some order of a huge point cloud. For instance, the points cloud I will show you, it was composed of something like 300 different small files that all the files together compose the huge point cloud. So the first the first step, important, is to put all these simple files together and have some order of this mess of small files that I don't have this. <coughs> I, I will go into details in the next slide. The second step is, once I will have this, some order here, 
we can pre-process the data in a way that is uh, that allows us to stream the, the data. We will go into detail, but basically is the first point I have to send to the mobile have to be the point that be most represent the whole shape of the of the point cloud. The second two points I will send have to be the ones that give me a little bit more of the information of the sh general shape, etc., etc., until I get all the points. The idea is each time I'm sending less point that the points that I really have, that, that I have on the server, they have to show you the general shape. It's, it, it, I cannot sh send you just the first 10 points or something like that. It has to be 10 points that represent the whole shape of the point cloud. And the last step is based on the position and the view of the camera, etc. select which points I need, download them, and show them. So, for the porting step, we, we tackle this, this, this problem <coughs> creating a planetary level virtual quad tree. By virtual, I mean we will only create the, the nodes that actually have data. But from the outside, it's a planetary level, infinite, not infinite, but planetary level size quad tree. To store the data, we use a key value store. Actually, we use BerkeleyDB, the Java version. The Java version still has a good license. The C version of BerkeleyDB changed the license. Be careful, because Oracle changed it to GPL without <coughs> telling any, anybody. So the Java version is still, it, it still has a library license, not a GPL. <laughs> so the idea here is we create these quad keys. The squad keys, this is an, an idea of what a quad key means. Zero means the, the child, the child, in this case, zero, zero means I am the child zero of my parent that is zero, or in this case. So those quad keys has some important properties. The first property is the length of the key means the depth into the quad tree. So each time I split, I just append one character. So this key represents a, a child, a, a node of the, of, the, of the quad tree of level one, two, three, four, five, or level five. The other, the other interesting thing is having any quad key, you immediately know which child is your parent on the previous level. Just removing the last digit, you automatically know my parent is not this one. And the parent of this one is that one. It's only reading the key without actually reading any data. <coughs> and the other most important feature of these keys for my case, is if you can traverse traversal the data using the key, it's, it means it's the same that traverse a tree depth first, depth first. So to resume that, we store data only on leaf nodes, the inner nodes are virtual, doesn't exist. So if I have data here, I install only data, oops, sorry. I store only data for these guys. I'm not storing on the disk, this guy or this guy. <coughs> With this, First importer, I actually read the data and putting them 
into this virtual quad tree. When I finish the import process, I can traverse the first, and I have smaller pieces that I know where they are. Because the key also, of course, the key, I, I forgot to mention, the key gives you a sector of the Earth without reading the, the data, only using the quad key. <coughs> this is the test result of this first step. I managed to process almost 3 billion points in 16 hours. Sorry, 19 hours. But before thinking it's slow, let me tell you that I use my notebook and an external USB hard drive because I have not enough uh, space on mine. So actually, this was the bottleneck, the USB 2 hard disk transferring the data. So the numbers are quite good. <coughs> so for this almost 3 billion points, I created 90,000 nodes with, with data. The levels, the depth levels was between 13 and 19. It depends of, it has different densities, the point cloud, different places. And on average, it was uh, 18 levels. And it, on each node, I had on average 30,000 points on each Second step, I have to pre-process the data I just import and sort it in a way that is useful for the level of detail selection of the algorithm. How many of you are know the KD tree structure? Nobody? It's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me introduce a little bit faster the KD tree structure. The KD tree it's a tree, it's a binary tree most of the time. And the idea is you will split on each level using one axis of the data. So it's a multi-dimensional structure. It allows you to create a 2D data or 3D or 4D data because it's a split the axis on each level. This is what a KD tree is. So the novel use of the KD tree for this uh, step is we are going to split by the max axis each time. The data, most of the time, is not regular. It's more larger, or more taller, or whatever. So we are going to split. We, wanna, we calculate the bounds of the all data. We select the max ax, and we'll split over that axis. We will not just X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. We will select, and on each level, we will select the largest axis to split. And we are going to split on the median. So it will produce a very balanced tree because we are always splitting by half. And the assumption here, and the good idea here is the split point I selected, remember, is the median of the large axis of the set is a good representation of the children's. This is the idea. So we are going to sort each of the child we generated on the previous step using this quad tree. We will create a quad tree. And each level of the tree is a level of the visualization. If I have to send only one point, this will be the point. This point, that is the median of the large axis of the whole point cloud, is a good representation for the rest. Here, the, this operation is, 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 is local to each, to each node. So here, I'm going to split probably by a different axis. And this one will be a good representation of, of this part of, of the tree and so on. So this is the first level for the level of detail, one point. This is the second level, two points. This is the third level, four points. 
and so on. So if you can send or you, you only got seven points because it's still downloading, you will have a really good representation of the rest of the, of the structure of the, of the structure of the, of the whole shape, of the whole point cloud, sorry. So same hardware than before, it took 19 hours. Actually, I think it's a mistake. I think it was 16 hours. Okay, <coughs> more or less the same. And this is what, what we got with the second step. We were able to create, on average, 14 level of details per tile. Okay, now we are on the final step. We are on the mobile side. We have all the information server side. And this was the visualization part of the algorithm that, that does. First, it can download a metadata. That's it, a description of how many nodes, how many points each node has, the, the bound sector of the etc. Metadata that I need for this step. Basically, I have this one, the bounding box of each tile. So using this bounding box of the, of the tile, I can estimate how big this tile will be on the screen. This is what projector size means. It's a raw estimation of the size in pixels of a 3D structure. So based on this, I know how many levels I need per tile. And after that, download, cancel, whatever. Let's cross finger with internet. Come on, come on. Oh, great. Okay, this is an example. This data is being downloaded from internet right now. So it's a little bit slow now. Here you can see the general shape of the three billion size points cloud. And when you start to zoom, the algorithm detects I need more levels, start to download those levels. When they arrive, they show the levels. As you can see, the streaming effect is, is rich. Here you can see it's actually 3D. You can see the mountain. I have another example. It's a little bit smaller, but it's, it is a city, so we will see a different shape. Come on, internet. Come on. I think it's not, it's not downloading anything. Oh, yeah, 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 it's coming. Oh, sense to that.
I almost said time. <laughs> Four minutes. Questions, comments? Invitation for a dinner or a, or a beer or something? <laughs> Yeah, they need a uh, web shield support that most of the modern browser has. Yeah. Yet yeah, most of the time, especially with LiDAR, points closed, you, you have not a smooth resolution all over the points cloud. So the level of the tiles are not the same because the area with more points, so in this case, the tiles will be smaller, smaller in, I mean, in, in meters, smaller, in, not in, 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 in how many points they are, but they will be smaller on the screen. So it, the, the, the depth, it's bounded with the density of the points cloud on this particular case. And you have some edge cases on the edge. Actually, I don't see any, but here on the edges is probably that those guys will have more points, more density, because the child is bigger than the, than the data. So there are some edge cases on the edges. Did it answer your question? Yeah. You're welcome. Are you guys considering using any other backing stores other than Berkeley DB? We would like to just rely on somebody else that made that part. So we are visualization guys yeah. that really like to be doing open shell calls every, every, every day. And we had to do that because we, we, we didn't find an option. And the machine you're running this on is just a single, just a single machine that's already loaded your data just running off of? Yeah, an old uh, Linux uh, desktop I had at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I would like to not write any server line of code in my life, <laughs> at least for one, one this project, but I had to. That is, that's a point. So you're, you're loading devs here. How big are the devs? You, you mean the, this? Uh, what class? I don't remember the size in, on Gigabyte, but it was three billion points. So I, I don't remember. You put on the mobile device itself, right? Sorry, sorry? So probably way too big to put on the mobile device. Yes, yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't know, but maybe it was one terabyte or something like that. I don't, don't I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah. How do you compare to CMTS? So I understand the point cloud is an extra feature there. So is it the the framework, the whole framework, yes, we are we are comparable. The main difference they are JavaScript only, and we are native. And we, our main target are mobiles, and they, and our friends from Cision were lucky that iOS introduced WebShield in the previous version. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm, it much depends of the of the density of the. I mean, if you have a smooth density, you have the same density all over the the the, the points cloud. Probably a random sampling will work. But if you have areas with three times the density that the area, 
close to it, you will select randomly three more points from this area than from this area because it's more density you know, and the random. So you will not show the general shape. You will select more points of, of the areas that have more density. The one else? The beer? <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming.